Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Fikrat and this video continues series, uh, video series dedicated to learning Microsoft Fabric. And in this video, we are uh, exploring uh, building iterative logic within data integration pipelines. So in last couple of sessions, uh, we first learned how to uh, extract data using queries. Um, by um, utilizing a lookup activity. And then we saw how that um, output from that lookup activity could be assigned to a variable using set variable activity. Um, in this session, we are going to build upon that pipeline and then we will uh, build iterative logic based on the data sets that produced by, by these two activities. Uh, iterative logic is great when you want to perform certain tasks, uh, similar tasks uh, in regard to some uh, collection of items. Uh, let me open a pipeline that we have created in the last lesson. So this is a pipeline we have created in last two lessons. Uh, to remind you, we have lookup uh, query activity, which um, selects two fields from customer table, and it passes data to set variable activity, um, which uh, in turn assigns that uh, to name list variable so name list variables is array type so take a quick look so this is my name list variable and now i'm going to add for each loop to build iterative logic so my plan is to add customer id to look up um, and then um, Within for each loop, for each customer ID, I am going to call store procedure uh, and I am going to pass to that customer ID uh, and update order status uh, for, for each given customer ID. Uh, so first things first, I uh, select lookup activity and add customer ID to output. Now take a quick look to ensure data is good. Okay. And let me rename this. And now I'm going to add for each activity. I'll head up to Activities tab, and from here I'll pick for each loop. And here I'll go. I'm going to link it to my set variable activity using success dependency. I'll call it for each customer. Now let's set up uh, item collection for this loop, uh, for each loop activity. So I'm going to select settings and from here I'll go uh, and uh, click add dynamic content for items. And here I have two options. I can either use lookup from query value array, which will give me output from the lookup activity, or I can use variables. Uh, so variables that I am creating as part of this set variable activity. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, so name list, I know that name list contains the values, uh, customer IDs I need. So I will click OK. For each activities configuration is done. Now I can add activities within uh, for each uh, activity. So I'm going to, 
before we uh, I proceed further let me show you stored procedure that I have created for the purpose of this demo uh, so this store procedure receives two parameters a customer ID and the order status and for selected customer ID uh, I will update status of sales order table to a given order status okay let me head back to my pipeline and now I am adding I'm going to add store procedure activity here and let me select store procedure and the configure so let me first uh, name it sales order update sales order and uh, switch to settings I'll choose connection I'll choose store procedure name and I'll use import button to bring parameters okay um, so customer ID field uh, is going to be dynamic so this will be supplied uh, by uh, for each loop so I'm gonna use add dynamic content button and here I will select for each customer current item uh, fun, uh, expression for each customer so this gives me this expression item expression um, and uh, here because I am only interested in customer ID field from the um, JSON so I'm going to add customer ID here customer ID uh, as you can see fabric suggests this uh, column because it knows that it knows the fields that I added as part of my lookup or variable and I'll hit OK and for order status I'm going to set it to one so right now order status is set to five to all uh, sales orders by default I'm going to change it to one for selected customers uh, belonging to certain uh, sales uh, sales representative okay I see my pipeline configuration is complete I can now store save it and uh, execute the pipeline okay so my pipeline has completed successfully so let's examine the results uh, so uh, we have lookup from query activity and it produced this JSON uh, so as you can see now we have customer ID inside each record and uh, if I examine the um, name list variable that has been assigned by using this activity I can see this, this uh, records uh, included and uh, this is my for each customer activity it has multiple sub activities so let me expand this um, so within that uh, my we can see that my store procedure has run in loop um, so my first query was supposed to return 32 records and accordingly this uh, storage procedure has run 32 times I can also take a look at the parameters passed for each execution so this is one customer ID and I can see the uh, order status and if I check another execution I will see different customer ID one thing to note about for each uh, activity is that um, it can run sequentially as well as in parallel so let me show the settings of for each 
uh, if I go to settings, I can see sequential box here. Uh, so by default, this will uh, this will run in parallel. So um, in my example, 32 uh, store procedures have been run in parallel. However, uh, in some scenarios, it is beneficial to have um, um, activities run in se sequence. So in that case, you can set this uh, and uh, uh, it, this activities. So it, that will result in long execution, of course, but uh, that will ensure that uh, each activity runs after the previous one has completed. So this concludes today's session. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.